All right, welcome back to another exciting edition of ColaVision. All right, today's video is on energy and light. And specifically, the big thing we're looking at today is this little guy. Wow, look at him go. We're going to be talking about water photons. Where do they come from? We're going to talk about their wavelength. We're going to talk about frequency. And we're going to talk about the energy of these waves. So that's the purpose of today's lab. So, or lab, my goodness, I got too much going on. So the first thing I want to do is this. Look at this little question I asked. So where does the light in this room come from? So let's take a look at our ceiling in this room. So as I look up at the ceiling in this room, here's what I see. I see these fluorescent light bulbs up in the air. You sit in them every day, but where? Where does, why does it make light? You've probably never given this any consideration. You just hit a switch and let there be light. It comes on. Well, obviously something has to be going on up there. Well, let's take a look at one of those tubes. I'm gonna skip me a page here. So let's take a look at one of those tubes. Those little tubes that are just randomly giving off the light up there are filled with elements on the periodic table, one in particular being phosphorus. And so what happens when you turn on that light switch, what is happening is you are, pow, you're throwing some electricity into this tube, bam, bam. Now, I want you to think about something. We're gonna throw electricity at the atoms in this tube. Well, let's take it a step further. You're going to throw electricity at these things. I want you to think about you sitting possibly right now in your nice little comfy chair. Let's draw your booty down there. So there you are. Wow, your legs are like, wow, this person's really weird. But anyway, so here you are right now, all happy because you're watching a good old turd ferg video, best education for the dollar. Hey, as always, no ads on my channel. So anyway. So you're sitting here watching the old Turd Ferg channel. Now I want you to imagine, what would you think would happen if somebody fired up and put 17,000 volts right into your rear end? What's going to happen to you? Well, you are probably going to jump up out of this chair. So now I want you to think about the atoms in this tube. So here's Mr. Atom up here, just hanging out in there. What's going to happen to that atom? Well, in particular, that atom has got electrons in it. These electrons, let's write him in red. These electrons occupy what we call an energy level. In other words, it's kind of like an orbit inside the atom. And when you hit that atom, let's do the same thing. Hit that atom with, here it comes, bam, 17,000 volts of electricity. Oops, 17,000. That electron is going to do the same thing you would do. The electron is going to jump. Ah! So the electron jumps to a higher energy level. So here's the electron. He's jumped to a higher energy level. So let's do this one more time. So here's the electron. Let's, let's make this really good. So here's the electron. He's just chilling out, taking a little nap. Matter of fact, we got a sexy science name for this. We would say that that ground state in that atom, or that electron is in the ground state. That means he's just chilling. He's just hanging out. The atom's nice and calm. Nothing's going on. Then all of a sudden, but here it comes. Man, I'm getting crazy with this one. Here it comes in the case of, I'm just throwing 17,000 volts. The light above your head isn't 17,000 volts. But anyway, you get the idea. You got to throw some voltage at the electron. The second you hit that electron in that atom with this voltage, that electron literally jumps to a higher energy level. So I'm going to randomly call this the first energy level. And so let's say that that electron jumps to the second energy level. Mr. Cole, how many energy levels are there? It goes all the way to infinity. There's a crap load of, infin of these energy levels. But let's say that this electron jumps to the second energy level. Well, if we go back to what we talked about a second ago, just like if I shocked you with 17,000 volts of electricity, you're going to jump up in the air, but you're also going to fall back down. Well, this electron, he doesn't want to be. You see, somewhere down here is that good old nucleus. And that nucleus has got some protons in there, and they're positive. That electron, he gets kind of homesick. So what happens is this electron, he wants to come back to where he started. And what happens in the process, and we've got a name for this, this going up and down, both of these processes, we call this a transition. 
Anytime the electron moves from one energy level to another, we say it went through a transition. So somebody shocks that electron. He jumps. He transitions to higher energy level. By the way, we would now say that he is excited. This atom is excited. The electrons have been pushed to higher energy level. So the electrons want to fall back down. And as that electron falls back down, this is where Einstein steps in the scene. Einstein said that this atom, remember, energy can't be created or destroyed. Well, if I jumped up and down and landed on your toe right now, it would hurt. Well, just like I would be giving you energy, this electron gives off energy. But it gives off energy in the form of a photon. Now, this is where Einstein come in and did something neat. Einstein said that this photon moves like it's a wave. This is why you've got to understand waves to get into this chapter, because that photon's going to move like a wave. Well, you can even move like a wave. I challenge you, walk out the room, wherever you're sitting today, and I want you to walk, and I want you to bob up and down the entire time you walk. Hey, bobby, 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 bobby. And if someone stops and asks you, and you say, hey, man, I'm a photon, back off. So anyway, so here's this photon that we've got up here traveling. So now since this photon moves as a wave, that means this photon has a wavelength. And if you are unfamiliar with the symbol we use in the world of chemistry and physics for wavelength, we use that little gopher. He's a lambda is what he is. Don't know why I called him a gopher, but anyway, can't stop my Alabama heritage, I guess. Anyway, let's move on. So let's take a look at this photon. So we know where this photon comes from now. It's because an electron did what? The electron jump. Does the electron want to stay up there? No. So the electron falls back down, and the big moral of the story is as the electron falls back or transitions back to the, ooh, remember I gave this a sexy science name, ground state. Woo! So the electron falls back to the ground state, and he gives off or emits, ooh, it sounds even sexier, emits a, what we call this? What we call it? What we call it? A photon is given off. And if you're wondering, so like, does a photon have mass? No, it doesn't have mass. All a photon is, it's just a packet of energy. That'd be a way of looking at it. All it is is a packet of energy. So if it's energy, by definition, energy is the ability to cause change. So does a photon have energy? Well, yeah. I challenge you. Go outside. Dun, dun, dun. Go outside. Pop your shirt off. Uh, assuming it's not going to embarrass anybody. Stand out in the sunshine. See what happens after a little while. Does photons from the sun have the ability? So here's the old sun. Here comes the sunlight. Whee! Here comes all these photons from the sun coming at you. Do these photons have the ability to cause a change? You're dang right. I'm pasty as all get out. Stick me out there for just a little while, and this is what I'll be looking like out there. I will look like a red link sausage patty or something like that. But anyway, so yeah, it has the ability to cause a change. So what you've got to be able to do, what you've got to be able to do is if you are given a photon, here he comes. Remember, photons move like, wow, that's not my fault. That is a computer glitch. So here comes this photon moving like a wave. Look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful photon. And so what happens is this. We've got to be able to look at this individual photon, and we've got to be able to find that photon's wavelength. Oh, this is amazing. You mean we have that technology? You're dang right. And you can have that technology for the low price of $9.95 because that's all a simple spectroscope like this costs. That's right. For $9.95, you too can own a spectroscope. So what does a spectroscope do? It lets us see photons. And so what happens is this. When you look at this fluorescent light, I'll circle it again, through this thing. By the way, make sure you aim that there's a little slit over on this end. That's what you look through. You look through that little slit at the light. So here's your eyeball over here. And what you have to do is there's a screen right here. You look at that screen, and this is what you will see on that screen. Notice something. You see little lines of color. 
Each one of these lines you're looking at represents an individual photon. And so you can look at the light in this room, and it's given off one, two, there's a green one, three, another one, four, five. The lights in this room are given off about four individual types of photons. And look at them. You can see them. Each photon has a different wavelength. So if you look in this picture, ooh, that's a beautiful blue atom in about four. Notice how I'm going to write this. That's 440 nanometers is what this scale represents. By the way, oh, look at that red. Oh, there's a beauty. Look at that red one. He's at, what, about 650 nanometers? Oh, look at that red one in there. Oh, goodness, that's a beautiful. By the way, do you notice that this scale only goes from 4 to 700 nanometers? Why does the scale in the 9... Is it because it's a 995 spectrometer? That gum cheap spectrometer. I bet if you spent a 1000 bucks, we'd get one that actually went beyond 400 to 700 nanometers. Why does the scale only go between 400 and 700 nanometers in a spectrometer? Because that's all we see. This is all we can see. Ah, is 400 to 700. Are there other photons? Yeah, you're getting hit by photons right now. There's radio waves hitting you. If there's a microwave, oh, you've got a cell phone probably in your pocket, don't you? Ah, uh, you're getting hit by microwaves right now. Hey, I hope it's not in your front pocket. Anyway, at least if you're a guy. Never mind. We won't continue with that route. All right. So anyway, let's keep on going down through this list here. So look at this photon. I want to focus on this guy. So there's a photon, a crap load of them being given off of photons. And so now I'm going to look at that one individual photon. And I'm going to see if I can't calculate the energy of that photon. So let's step over here. So here's that photon, and we just said that it's got a wavelength of 440 nanometers. Now I'm going to ask you two questions, and this is what you got to be able to do. If I give you that photon, can you tell me the frequency of that photon? And if you don't know what frequency means, it's basically saying, how many times a second does that photon go up and down? Well, I'll give you a hint. Ah. That photon's really moving. It's really going up and down every single second. So anyway, so let's kind of go. And I want you to do one more thing. Can you find the energy of that photon? Well, we've got a few equations we can use to work this problem. And here are those equations. My two favorite little equations look like this. C equals lambda F, which is nothing but an old 10th grade equation for velocity is all it is. Lambda times frequency. So if you don't have these things, C stands for the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. It's a constant in all these problems. Lambda stands for wavelength. Uh, now I'm going to tell you something. Most of these problems, your wavelengths are given in nanometers, but you need to rewrite them as meters, which ain't hard as long as you know that nano means 10 to negative 9. F is your frequency, which frequency is in hertz. Uh, theoretically, frequency is the same thing as a 1 over s, but anyway, 1 over second. But anyway, we named uh, Hertz comes from a guy named Heinrich Hertz, who kind of helped develop AC electricity. Well, I don't know if you could say that. Uh, theoretically, a guy named Tesla did that. But anyway, hey, who cares? Tesla had this idea of free electricity for everybody. Nothing's free. That kind of defeats the purpose of America. Anyway, next, E equals HF. And that's our next equation. You can obviously guess E stands for energy. Now, energy can be measured in two different units, both a joule or, check this one out, an EV, brand new sexy science unit at you. H is actually known as Planck's constant because reality is while Einstein took this equation, used it for all his devious means, the reality of it is a guy named Planck actually kind of come up with this equation originally. And so we call this letter H Planck's constant, which means it's always 6.63 times 10 to negative 34 joule dot second for a unit. And then, well, we already know what F is. So now, using this information, can you tell me for this purple light that I saw? In other words, here we go. Boom. Going back to right here. Where are you, buddy? I'll look at that photon. 
Look at that photon. Boom, boom. Can you tell me the energy of that photon? And if you can, then there's no need of you watching the second video that goes along with this. But if you can't, then stay tuned and watch part two of this video series. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.